Hey Bears, Eric here, and I am sure the usual suspects are big mad about this news. Matter of fact, I know they're big mad because I'm already seeing the videos out there. Apparently Disney is dead again. How many times has Disney died now? How many funerals have we been to? <laughs> Feels like a lot at this point. So they're upset and mad because they're king of anti-woke that was going to come in and sweep all of us under the rug, sweep all this diversity under the rug, take marginalized groups and just completely shove them out of films and TV shows and media in general and bring a bunch of white men in. That's, that's what this guy wanted to do. And they wanted that to happen. And trust me, it would have been absolutely devastating, I believe, if Nelson would have won this position by votes and would have came in and made sweeping decisions at Disney. It would have been detrimental to all the work that has been done to try and make Disney more diverse. It absolutely would have been. We're already seeing Bob Iger, who I'm not a huge fan of, by the way, Bob Iger pulling back on projects, canceling stuff and things like that. We did not need like another person who's like 500 times worse than Bob Iger coming in and, and, and uh, you know, making changes like that. They gate kept this guy out of Disney. And it was a pretty big margin. 94% of the vote went to Bob Iger. So massive, massive win for Bob. Um, and for us, actually, because again, this would have been devastating for our communities. We would have been in so much trouble if this guy, Nelson Peltz, would have came in. Let me remind you on what he said, in case you're wondering. So he had a quote, this was a couple of weeks ago, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he asked why we need a Marvel movie that's all women, even though that movie does not exist. There is no Marvel movie that's all women. So he had to be talking about a woman-led film, which is probably something like Captain Marvel, which made over a billion, or something like the Marvels, where we had multiple women in lead in the movie, right? That's the only thing he could have been talking about. So he didn't know what he's talking about then. And then he asked about like movies where we had all black people in the movies, which by the way, the only films he could be talking about in that regard would be Black Panther and Wakanda Forever. By the way, the reason why we need those is because Black Panther made over a billion dollars and Wakanda Forever made almost $900 million, both very successful movies for Marvel. So it's a really dumb question to ask anyway, and it comes off like super racist. So yeah, not the greatest shit for someone to be saying, uh, but this is a huge blow to the anti-diverse community, to all of these bobbleheaded bigots out there who have nothing but time on their hands and hate in their hearts to go around and harass and bother marginalized communities. Uh, I got a couple notes here that I want to talk about. The big one here is that investors rejecting this, I think is a pretty big turning point. I think it means that these large companies see value in diversity and they're rejecting these anti-diverse, anti-woke people coming into the space. Uh, we're talking about a company as big as Disney. So these guys would have access to the numbers, to the financials, uh, to all of that stuff that they need to know to make this decision. These are shareholders. They'd, they would have all of this. So the fact that they rejected Nelson means that they see value in diversity because he came in really hot. He was like, we just need, we don't need queer people. We don't need black people. We don't need women in these movies. Just bring in the white guys and let's be done with it. That's he came in like that with that kind of energy, and they just rejected it. Again, 94% for Bob Iger. Pretty big margin. Uh, so I think that for me, that shows that Disney, at the very least, is keeping an eye on the market and knows that there's value in, in our communities. Um, we're talking about marginalized communities, uh, women, people of color, uh, just in, in general, you know, tr the trans community, the gay community, just they see value in that. And that means a lot for me because. They're, these are people that are into the financial part of it. They're not necessarily out there as some sort of activism stuff, which is what this guy was. This guy was a conservative activist. He was an anti-diversity activist. So these are people that are looking at money. They're looking at the numbers and they decided, no, this is not a good idea for us. We don't want to do it. This is a massive win for us and a massive L for the anti-diverse community. And we love to see it. Trust me, we do. Uh, gatekeep these kind of people out of entertainment. I'm totally on board with that. I don't want these like bigots coming in and saying, hey, we're going to make it twice as hard for people like us, you and me, to be able to get into entertainment and have a space where we can go out and showcase our art and be a part of the creative uh, process, all of that. These are things that we do not need these kinds of people in. And I'm tired of tiptoeing around this 
and acting like it's just okay. We're going to, we'll just take what we can get. Give us crumbs. No, no more crumbs. No more crumbs. As a community, we need to stop taking all this disrespect. Stop listening to these people who want to try and call us degenerates and all of these awful names. I refuse to let that be a badge that I wear because they think they can say that. We are important to art. We're important to the creative process. And this is a massive win for us. So fuck all of the bigots.